We begin with a major political fight in the U.S. over the vacant seat on the Supreme Court. U.S. media reports say President Donald Trump will nominate Amy Coney Barrett to fill that seat. She would replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who died last week. So Barrett currently serves as a federal appeals court judge and is known for her conservative religious views. Trump told journalists on Friday he'd made up his mind, but he refused to confirm the speculation ahead of an official announcement on Saturday. For more, I'm joined by Erwin Collier, professor at Bard College in Berlin. Erwin, it's really nice to have you with us. Nice to um, be here. What do we know about Amy Coney Barrett? In essence, what effect would she have on the Supreme Court? Uh, to start probably with the most important, she is 48 years old, which means with good health, she could be around for a long time. Mm -hmm. She clerked after law school with Antony Scalia, Justice Antony Scalia. Uh, Scalia, who was a very conservative justice, uh, one of the originalists. So uh, uh, she uh, she's part of the school of jurisprudence in the United States that believes you have to second guess what the founders and authors of the Constitution would have said had they lived in 20. Twenty. Mm. Uh, uh, so it, it, it puts a very conservative spin on what she does. She's been an appeals judge since 1997. It was a very controversial hearing, but split completely on party lines. She was approved. Before that, she was a professor of law at the University of Notre Dame. But the, perhaps the most interesting for the politics, uh, she is firmly in the anti-abortion side of uh, the debate. And, uh, as a very conservative Catholic, uh, Catholicism uh, dominates the Supreme Court. She would be the sixth Catholic justice of the Supreme Court right now. But that by itself doesn't tell you much because, as everyone knows, uh, a religion like that goes from Sotomayor all the way to uh, uh, Judge Barrett. So uh, the, cons uh, uh, the chief justice will no longer be the swing vote in coming uh, elections. It, and that's it, clearly part of the plan. Uh, that's clearly plan A. If she is, in fact, Trump's nomination, how likely is she to actually get that seat? I mean, the Republicans certainly have the numbers. Uh, barring unforeseen uh, 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 skeletons in her closet, mm. which strikes me as unlikely, given that she's already been through a pretty serious uh, vetting, uh, uh, it's a done deal. Uh, they knew that before Trump uh, even announced it, which made it was also sort of peculiar. They said, we approve and we don't know who he's going to name, which is a, a rather odd way of doing things. So uh, the Republicans are going to stand behind this nomination. So turning to another big factor in this election altogether, the coronavirus pandemic, of course, the United States has hit another new milestone. Let's get this right. Seven million cases, now more than 200,000 deaths. How significant is this likely to be going into the election in November? Well, as the old saw goes, one person's death is a tragedy. 200,000 is a statistic. Um, mm. This has been weighing on the American uh, body politic. And the difference in the polls, when you see that it's been a steady difference between Joe Biden and uh, Donald Trump to Biden's favor, that difference is built on a pandemic that has literally had no presidential leadership or a failed presidential leadership, that won't change. So a distraction from reality uh, with another reality, fighting about abortion rights, gun rights, libertarian interpretations of the US Constitution is an attempt to put a little bit of smoke when uh, you're running out of mirrors. <laughs> I like that. Smoke when you're running out of mirrors. Uh, Erwin Collier from Bard College Berlin, really appreciate your insights. Glad to be here.